Mentioning uh, Narconistium was a very good point because I was quite impressed um, with the whole situation that Possessed pulled out so near to the festival. I'm not sure how, how near it was, but it was, it was a matter it was of days, right? Two days before the festival. Two days, and then you managed or, to... Yeah, two days before the festival. And uh, I, sat, I sat with my laptop an hour and were, uh, were, you know, reading the mail over and over again and going, fuck, 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 what to do now, you know? And uh, it, because Possessed is such a, you know, it's not the biggest band in the world, so it's not a disaster for the festival, but it's a disaster for the uh, for the people that went to see Possessed because it's a special band, yeah. they're so yeah. special to them, you know. So, uh, so it's really impossible to uh, to replace them anyway because you can't find another Possessed, you know. To <laughs> so we just had to think totally new, and then I thought, what's the best album I heard the, lo uh, the last couple of weeks? <laughs> and then I came up with a. Not, not Mystium album, and uh, I found out their agent, agent because it, um, by coincidence, they had the same agent as Municipal Waste, I guess. So we were, we were all already in touch, you know, and they were like, can you go to the airport in like four hours? Like, yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> they flew in from Chicago. Uh, on the same day that we uh, uh, formed them up. So, so they weren't in Europe already, they came from Chicago? Yeah. But you see what I mean? That's an example of thinking outside the box in that sense. It would have been very easy probably for you to just call up a band from Bergen and go, look, we've got a spot, do you want to do it? Yeah, and everybody's yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah, cool, it's whoever, and we've seen, we've seen it before, but it's cool. But you try and replace Possessed with something else that's interesting for people, you know what I mean? Exactly, that, that was a point I was, that, that was so impressive. Was much easier, there was a much easier way to fix that problem and just go, ah, well, you know, people are there anyway, you saw the tickets, but... It was already sold out, so, but... Uh, yeah, you have to, uh, you know, try to uh, really stretch yourself to make it good. Yeah, because you could have gone for that for a local band, but then you know maybe um, it might not have had an impact on the day. But like in a year's time, people might go like, I know last year, you know, it was they pulled out and you know, it was just something else. So, so, so it's uh, it made an impact on me, and I noticed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lineup wise, they probably would have fitted more in this year, but. Uh, you know, we can think like that mm. at the time, you know, so... Yeah, it was, but it was quite... I mean, we definitely enjoyed, like I said, I mean, they, I think they were right before Primordial, so it kind of, that kind of... Uh, it somehow felt like they fitted together quite, yeah. quite well, you know? Yeah. Was that uh, the same day, was it um, Friday, I think it was? Was so it... it was, um, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Was it um, Electric Wizard, not Mystic Menu, was it... With Something like that, yeah, yeah. with Sadistic Intent sadistic. before, yeah. Mystical Waste before that, I think. No, Sadistic Intent, um, Electric Wizard, mm, yeah. and then you, and then, no, then uh, Nachtmysterium, and then you, yeah, and then Keep the Lesson, I guess, yeah, yeah, that's right, right. at the gates. Yeah, finish it all. Um, has there been any, um, not including this year, but looking back in the previous years before, is there any year that particularly stands out as you, for you as a year with the lineup that, um, not necessarily that they were your, they were your favourite bands, but just maybe bands that... Um, it was a special lineup, or it was something that yeah. like, stands out. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've been very happy about all the years, uh, basically. But uh, there's some things that stands out due to you know the circumstances and all that. And uh, I think that 2004, uh, when, when we really started to you know pull people from other places, uh, mm. from uh, foreign countries and uh, other places in the uh, in, in Norway and stuff, and uh, there was a huge bus uh, on the lineup with uh, dancing uh, headlining, and we were a bit nervous about that because we didn't, you know, people were talking about that guy. But he turned out to be a really uh, nice person to deal with, no trouble whatsoever, and he was really happy about the show, and he, he did a fantastic job, and uh, the audience were really impressed. And uh, and we had the Bathory tribute thing sure. right on right before that, so uh, and that was really special as well. And I thought after the Bathory tribute, oh whatever, if Dancy fails, I don't I don't care because this was so fantastic. And then he comes on and does something completely different that doesn't even compete with uh, 
you know, what the feeling you had on the Bathory trip. It, it was just a new, fantastic show. So uh, that that day was really special. And um, I think the 2006 lineup was, was also uh, pretty uh, amazing with Morbid Angel playing with the Garage. I want to ask about uh, that. Uh, and uh, Egojira, uh, you know, <coughs> thrashing all people. Uh, because when Gojira played, probably like 15 people that ha had heard about them uh, up front but uh, it was the two first songs were s complete silence and then people started laughing and watch, uh, look at each other and on the fourth song everybody just went totally nuts yeah. mm -hmm. the 2006 that was um, Kelty Frost and uh, I don't know it no. um, it was played 2006 Kelty Frost headline one night and and uh, my dying bride. That's right. Yeah. Uh, satirical. And yeah. Destruction. I think. And uh, atheist. Maybe. Yeah, that was two thousand six. Witchcraft as well. Yeah. One thing that I found very interesting was you talked before about moving from a, a garage with its uh, you know its small capacity to uh, Varta. Mm. Um, Morbid Angel in garage. I mean, that was quite something. I mean, that show was. That was, that was the only show I've seen myself or seen pictures of since Mobile Asia came back where uh, Dave Vincent didn't wear his um his <laughs> latex PVC top because of the heat in the venue. But getting Morbid Angel in garage that was that was insane. I mean because a band yeah. like that they're not they're not cheap. And uh, you know so so the costs are one thing and also to see Morbid play like that. I mean it was yeah it was uh, a funny thing actually because we had already booked the headliner for uh, Friday and Saturday so we couldn't put them on there because uh, the bill was filled up already, and uh, we were talking about uh, up from the ground. I think the festival doesn't exist no more. But, yeah, uh, finished uh, in German festival. Yeah, yeah. And they were talking about bringing more potential over to Europe, and they were looking for some more dates. And uh, I mean, you don't say no to more potential. And I think this would be so completely insane to do it on garage. It costs money, but uh, we got by. <laughs> so uh, and it was worth it. Uh, and uh, it was like. It's almost stupid, so let's do it. But uh, <laughs> uh, it was fantastic. But uh, but I was uh, a bit nervous about when they you know, came because uh, yeah. what the re their reaction would be when they see this tiny little station. What the fuck? And uh, uh, and the guy from Atheist, I don't remember which of them, but he said he hadn't seen more potential in such a small venue since 1986 or uh, whatever. <laughs> And what did they th what did they think of it? Were they they were yeah? Or? I think they were uh, happy about it. I spoke to Trey afterwards, and he was really happy about it. Uh, I know uh, I know David Winsett had a throat problem, but uh, but I think they enjoyed it. Hmm. That was a, that, that was quite something seen in there. Um, yeah. Another thing I think is is very very good for this year. <coughs> uh, Gorgoroth, whether you're a fan or not, and I suppose a lot of people followed the the case with the, um, the dispute over who had rights to the name. I mean, I was very firmly on the side of uh, Infernus because it was his band. Um, you uh, appeared uh, in court um, yeah. and spoke um, um, in favor of Infernus, or were you? Yeah, yeah Infernus. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, you know, Thomas uh, has put in a lot of work in the band, and uh, oh, you know, he should have credit for that and stuff. But um, I mean, uh, Infernus started the band. Right. Over ten years before he, Tom Carter came into the band, and he's made like four albums, and three of them are like classic stuff and uh, and everything. So it's it's just weird if uh, uh, the band should continue without him. Mm. It's okay if he quit himself, but no. Yeah, but under those circumstances, yeah. what was your opinion? Who would you have sided with? Oh well, I mean, I used to write to Roger in '92 or three or whatever. So, and we played with them in. London with, with Cradle in 94 or something, 95. 95, yeah. And he, it's strange enough, he was the first person I met when I walked down into the garage in 2000 to go to Hole in the Sky. And I think, I think he got me in, I'm not sure. So, I mean, I know him from the old days from writing and stuff. So, in my opinion, it was his band, you know. I mean, regardless of the fact of who created what and this and that and the other, I mean, that's internal stuff, you know. Mm. I mean, um, you know, if with Primordial, I mean, if Kieran didn't write any songs for two or three albums, I mean, he's still been there since the very beginning. It's essentially his and Paul's band, you know. I, I don't think it would be right for one of us to, okay, we've had the same members, but I mean, mm. you know, to, uh, I couldn't really uh, kick him out of his own band. You know? <laughs>